The U.S. Navy destroyer has a hijacked Ukrainian ship in its sights, taken over by pirates off the coast of Somalia. But this time, it's different. The ship is laden with artillery, showing just how big the piracy business has become without a functioning Somali government. What should be done? What can be done? And perhaps most importantly, who can do it? This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm Kamal Santa Maria. Piracy in the Horn of Africa is nothing new, but it is undeniably getting worse. Case in point, the current hijacking of a Ukrainian ship full of tanks and other military cargo, which has sparked a remarkable international reaction. A US destroyer is monitoring the ship from close range. A Russian frigate has been dispatched. European navies are in the region too. And the pirates themselves? Well, they're demanding a, ran a ransom in the excess of $20 million. As we said, the piracy itself is nothing new, but the reaction is because only when a cargo of weapons was threatened did the world really react. Why is combating piracy such a low priority? And could it have been addressed earlier when it was, comparatively, more manageable? All issues we will discuss on today's show after this report from Dan Nolan. These pictures were filmed by Al Jazeera in the area off Somalia's coast where pirates are holding up to 15 abducted ships. It's difficult to verify which vessels are being held against their will, but not far from here is the most volatile prize in the pirates' possession, the Ukrainian-flagged MV Vayner with 33 military tanks on board. These photos were shot by crew members of the US warship that has the hijacked vessel in its sights, ensuring it doesn't unload any of the tanks or ammunition. A man claiming to be a pirate told Al Jazeera the $20 million ransom is not unreasonable. We want them to pay us a ransom because we have very high inflation and drought. We want them to pay a small amount of money. With one Russian crew member on board already dead from illness, Moscow has also sent its navy in to join US warships in the area. It's estimated around 1,000 young Somalis operate in pirate gangs, using small boats to hijack some of the 20,000 ships that travel through the strategic Gulf of Aden each year. Arrests like this one by Somali forces are rare. Engulfed by civil war, its resources are overstretched, and government ministers say the world, and in particular the US, has ignored piracy for too long. We criticize the American government very much because in the past we have seen them capture pirates and then release them. They have not paid enough attention to pirating. War and drought have made the piracy problem more acute. Food and aid that used to arrive by sea is directly under threat. And the potential of tanks, ammunition, or $20 million in ransom money being injected into Somalia's civil war is sure to escalate the suffering. Dan Nolan, Inside Story. Let's bring in our guests at this point. In Dundee, Franz Lehr, he is a professor at the University of St Andrews and an expert on piracy. In London, Mahmoud Noor, the Secretary for Planning and Training in the Alliance for the Liberation of Somalia. And on the line from Mombasa in Kenya is Andrew Mangura. He is the head of the East African Seafarers Assistance Programme. And I'm going to speak to you first, Mr Mangura, specifically about this incident which is happening right now. What has your organisation been able to do in this particular situation? Uh, currently, we are issuing out statements and making out radio talks and maybe calling press conferences and uh, begging the international community not to use force to solve the, uh, the, solve the problem of the fauna in Somalia. Because you understand the cargo ship is holding a very dangerous chemicals and very dangerous weapons, which may, be, they may damage the marine life as well as the seafarers on board and the, uh, the Somali community at large. In your opinion, is this heavy opinion, naval response that we're seeing, is it the right course of action? No, that's not the right cause of action. Always we've been saying that the solution of part in Somalia does not need military solution. It needs political solution, but not military solution. With the military solution, you cannot solve the problem. Because we understand the international forces, in fact, the Western forces, the Russians, are the root cause of, of uh, instability in Somalia and in Africa at large. 
Okay, let me put that to Mahmoud Noor in London. Similar question to you. This heavy naval response which we are seeing from four different countries, what's your view on it? Well, uh, I think uh, it's very important to stop the piracy in Somalia coast. Uh, Somalia has the large, uh, longest coastline. At the same time, uh, there are so many illegal fishing and uh, chemical waste dumping which are committed by international, uh, or international organizations and international companies. Uh, uh, international community just ignored that. Uh, now, this piracy has been developed. The only reason was because when Somali fishermen uh, felt a threat by other uh, fisheries, European fisheries, that use different names and different flags for their convenience in order to run away from European regulations. So I think uh, the uh, solution is not military force, but the solution is should be comprehensive and, 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 and should be solved in, 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 in a way that will satisfy the needs of Somali people and the protection uh, in consideration of the protection of Somali resource, because Somali resource uh, was looted by uh, uh, unscrupulous uh, companies uh, that were uh, for the last 17 years. Professor Franz Lear is uh, nodding in agreement over there in Dundee. Uh, do you think perhaps a, a, a point which Mahmoud Noor brought up there is the fact that there is, a, there is a separate issue here? We're looking at a big international event here which grabs all the headlines, but there is a, there is a separate, yes. more domestic incident going on as well. Uh, yes, I agree with the statements of uh, Mr. Noor and Mr. Manguro. <coughs> you see, <coughs> Somalia also always comes only into the attention of uh, worldwide media if Western ships get hijacked, like the Seaborn Spirit in November 2005 or the Le Ponant in uh, earlier this year, or now this um, MV Fina. Uh, a lot of piracy is going on for a couple of years now, and uh, as Mr. Neuer said, it's, it's correct. It's basically lots of fish poaching done, which means uh, uh, Somali fishermen don't have much chance to otherwise earn their living. Uh, you see, usually I have the number of 100 uh, million US dollar on ransom money per year, but to set that into perspective, there's usually an amount of fish poached per year to the tune of 300 million US dollar. That's quite a lot of money, isn't it? Mm. You make the good point about this domestic issue, but I would like to talk a little bit more about the current issue we have on our hands right now. And as you point out, it, is, it gets all the headlines now because it is a major international uh, ship and, and the weapons, I guess. This is the other big issue, isn't it? The type of cargo right. that's on board. Do you think some of these overseas... Uh, forces who are in the region might be, for lack of a better phrase, kicking themselves now because this has been going on so long and now suddenly they've got what could be a very big incident on their hands and they haven't dealt with this type of thing before. Mm. Uh, well, OK, I agree to that as well. Uh, but the problem is what you have in the moment is basically a siege operation. Uh, you, you, you have a ship uh, now manned with up to 50 pirates, uh, heavily armed. Uh, Who is going to board this uh, MV Fina? Uh, uh, how much chance of success would you have? And uh, basically, who's going to do that? Is it the US Navy, the USS Howard there? Is it the Nostra Shemi, uh, the frigate of Russia? Uh, you end up with all sorts of problems. You see, you have a Russian warship, you have an American warship, and a European Union warship. You have a ship taken by pirates under uh, Ukrainian ownership. Uh, you have a cargo cons uh, basically destined for Kenya. You have all sorts of international laws problems and all sorts of nationalities uh, involved here. Just imagine um, uh, sailors from uh, Navy A board the ship and some of the crew members got killed. Uh, I wouldn't like to be the captain of the mm. ship responsible for that. So at the moment, you all you can do is wait and see and hope to negotiate with the pirates and, let's be honest, drive the price down. That's the best option you have at the moment. There's another thread to pull at, if you like, in this particular story. And I want to put it to Andrew uh, Wangura on the line from Mombasa. And that is this link which has been brought out by the US Navy, particularly that these weapons on board this ship were actually headed for uh, Sudan and not Kenya, as we were led to believe initially. Does that then widen the scope of responsibility here? Yes, that is correct. The weapons were destined for Sudan. And this is the third consignment of heavy military equipment from uh, Ukraine to Kenya, uh, to southern Sudan by Mombasa support. The first consignment came here in last 29th of October aboard a riddle mean shield, a Ukrainian ship. The second consignment came here on the 8th of January this year aboard a Ukrainian ship known as uh, Merrick, and then followed by another ship from Ukraine 
uh, white rhino, and then uh, then they came another ship on the, in the mid of uh, mid uh, mid February this year, the fourth ship with the same consignment of uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, tanks and uh, heavy military equipment heading to southern Sudan. And as we know, as we know, Sudan is under United Nations arms embargo. So it is very strange to allow those co those military equipment to pass through Kenyan waters and Kenya or over and to southern Sudan. And secondly, we know when the uh, when the peace agreement was signed by the both Sudanese, uh, southern Sudan and northern Sudan, uh, Kenya was a uh, part of that uh, that uh, peace accord agreement. So we find it very ridiculous uh, to allow this uh, consignment to pass through that's to, to pass to Kenyan water uh, heading to southern Sudan, and then this is first of all the cargo is illegally. To head into Somalia, that's if you head into to South Sudan, it's illegally. And secondly, according to international law of the sea, you cannot transport heavy military equipment with that, uh, with that uh, escort. Concerning, isn't it, Mahmoud Noor, in London, that we're seeing possibly here Somalia being used to fuel, and Kenya, in effect, being used to fuel uh, the problems in Sudan and Darfur? Well, it's very clear because Kenya was the honest, pretending at least, honest broker of peace deal between Sudan government and uh, southern Sudan uh, rebel groups. And now it seems to me that uh, Kenya uh, knows that achievement, um, armament achievement, and Sudan uh, doesn't know about this. And uh, wh why, why is that? Sudan is a sovereign country. You know, how come all that military shipment, what will, what will happen if, if this uh, shipment goes to uh, a rebel group? So I think it will escalate the conflict in Sudan, and, and I think it will jeopardize the peace agreement that they already signed. It. And I think this is illegal. Uh, and I, it seems to me Kenya government or Kenya high officials know this without their knowledge. This cannot happen. At the same time, international uh, uh, powers uh, or Western powers knew this because without their knowledge, I, I think that cannot happen. Mm. So uh, here, uh, a double standard. In one way, there is an army embargo in Sudan, and they are allowing this shipment to go in illegally. There is army embargo in Somalia, and they let Ethiopians to invade Somalia and brought uh, heavy weapons in Somalia. So this is uh, the double standard of international law. Okay. There's no respect what what they are claiming they don't re they don't have any respect for it right we're going to take a short break here stay with us gentlemen because when we come back we're going to look further into the international ramifications of increased piracy in the horn of africa we're back in a moment